Sounds like something who made up the word synergy was like, I need a new word. <laughs> Ergonomic. Synergy. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slave. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slave. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, we're watching the New Mutants trailer, Mike. It happened. <laughs> yep, it did. Uh, we're sneaking a peek at the Batman filming. Mm, okay. Uh, we're going to talk about the consequences of Doctor Strange losing a director. Ooh, consequences. Uh, oh, and more. I can tell you it probably won't be the box office. No matter what Marvel seems to do, it doesn't seem to reflect in the box office. It is kind of crazy. They really haven't had like a stinker, you know. Every movie, whether it's been critically like mediocre um, at worst, uh, has always like made a decent chunk of money, unlike Cats, which Mm -hmm. was a big, big box office bomb. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I I don't think anyone's surprised by that, though. That's that's the worst part uh, because I did not see that or I mean Emma Ray came out. Remember we were riding the bus to Comic Con when that came out, and we were like, "What is this?" And, oh yeah, uh, the Cats trailer. <laughs> and, and I was like, "I I have no interest whatsoever." <laughs> little little did we know what it what it would possibly happen with it. Um, apparently, there's an Alamo Draft House that has been open in Los Angeles for, I think, a little while now. I remember when it was under construction downtown, but I guess it's finally been open. I haven't haven't found my way down here, there yet, but they're kind of the famous movie theater for kind of doing unique and quirky screenings. Um, Alamo, of course, that means they've been out of Texas. So I don't know how many theaters are outside of the state of Texas with Alamo, but I guess they do um, rowdy screenings of cats at that theater. So so if you want to go to a screen, screen in a cats and just like just be just an annoying person that sings songs and yell at the screen, uh, the Alamo Draft House has you has you um, has exactly what you need. <laughs> I uh, I mean, do you, do you make cat calls at, at the the people? Oh, on screen? Chris! Do you bring no. in some catnip and throw it? Like I don't know what goes on in a cat screen. Man. <laughs> uh, all I can all I can tell you is at, at, if you ever go a chance to watch a midnight rowdy screen of the room. Better bring some spoons because you know, they're throwing spoons at the screen. A rowdy screening of anything is a fun experience. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. Cult classics, man. That's what I'm thinking. Um, this week, uh, I will tell you. Uh, I, speaking of cult classics, I this week I got to watch finally uh, the Jay and Silent Bob reboot movie. And have you? I, I know I asked you this. Have you ever seen the first one? Yeah, so if uh, anyone out there is not familiar with, uh, Jay and Silent Bob are characters that were created by Kevin Smith, Mm -hmm. the kind of indie movie darling who created Clerks and then went on to make other kind of very niche movies uh, that were nerdy and very um, cultish. Yeah, big uh, on dialogue. yeah, he's kind of had this second wind in his career of creating podcasts. So he's a he's a talker. He'll talk uh, he'll talk your ear off, and he usually is in Hall H for Comic Con, and he'll he'll just talk for hours on end. So he's kind of starting to transition to a new phase of his career where it sounds like he's going back and doing like sequels or third movies of his um, mm-hmm. of his older past. So that is what Jay and Silent Bob reboot is. It's a sequel yeah. to Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, who are characters that were side characters in the black and white first movie he made, Clerks. Well, they're in every movie he's done, I think, yeah. as, as characters. And Kevin Smith, of course, plays the character Silent Bob in, in, in all these. Yeah, he was kind of the weird originator of like the first, I would say, cinematic universe, really. I mean, on a totally different level, I mean, uh, but just having continuous characters that span through movies, like even though you really didn't need to have them do that, you know, it makes sense for Marvel because everybody knows these characters, but like there's a really good chance if you go up to someone on the street and ask them who Jay and Silent Bob are, they're just not going to know. Yeah, exactly. And and or, or they will be, you either don't know or you know everything. There's like no in between, it seems like. <laughs> Um, but the reboot is, is recently, I think it was crowdfunded 
even i i don't think it was uh, i don't i don't think it was crowdfunded but okay. they're doing a unique thing where they're touring the movie so yeah. you can't you can't just even if you're in a big theater like uh even if you're in a big market like i'm in los angeles i don't think i can just like google this movie and go watch it just like right now if i wanted to you have to get tickets to the tour where if you're watching the movie you watch it with them right like kevin smith was there at your screening right yeah yeah they they essentially went um the, the, the movie is a road trip across the country to Hollywood. They did the same kind of thing with the movie. So, um, and I will tell you, if you like the first one, you really have to like it. This is for you. And it <laughs> brings so many, like there's cameos all over the place. Uh, I will tell you, um, Supergirl, Melissa uh, Benoist is in here. Mm-hmm. Um, she plays the movie version of um, uh, Jay's superhero persona. Uh, I forget what it, what he's called. Uh, well, it's Blunt, Blunt Man, Man and Chronic. Yeah, so he plays Blunt Man. She she does that, and then Val Kilmer is the the Silent Bob <laughs> version of that. Oh, uh, great! Yeah, I, th- that's kind of one of the pluses of uh, being a a seasoned director in Hollywood. You make a lot of friends over the years. Oh yeah, even Ben Affleck, who has it was known to be Kevin Smith's friend and did all those movies, including Jersey Girl with him, and then they had like a falling out. So he's back in, and he makes fun. He has like a whole. He's got a, he's got probably the most heartfelt speech in this, but then he makes a bunch of Batman jabs at himself, like from when he was playing Batman and all this other stuff, uh, which was which is pretty good. I mean, it's very self-referential. This one's, I mean, the first one doesn't have heart. It's got weed jokes and like <laughs> hot girls stealing diamonds. Uh, this one's got more of a heartfelt message, but I mean, I tell you. I really enjoy the superhero comic book references that he he dumps into this movie. So, uh, if you get a chance to watch, I think it, I think it's streaming now. Um, I think the tour is over. Um, but uh, it's produced. It was distributed by Saban Films. And they <laughs> hardcore make fun of Power Rangers in this too. So. Yeah, yeah. The, his past couple films have not been very good quality yeah. or well received, but he somehow is able to get financing for these movies. I think he's basically just looking to like break even uh, with his uh, with his film career moving forward. But yeah, he he's a unique guy. That's for sure. Kevin Smith. Uh, you're not going to find anyone else out there like him. Yeah, no, definitely. And then the, and then he even. He's in the movie as himself debuting and filming Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Um, <laughs> and he they make fun of him uh, for casting his daughter in literally everything he does because that's what he does now. Um, which his daughter is named Harley Quinn Smith, who's named after Harley mm-hmm. Quinn. So uh, that that's a fun fact. I don't know. I, I watched this week. I was like, I need something light and, and not heavy. So do- dove into that, Mike. Um, and then I also... Ha- I know you said at the top of the show, outside of this, you haven't been watching the greatest of all time, Jeopardy. Um, but I will tell you, it's impressive. Those those people are <laughs> impressive on this show. I don't even watch Jeopardy, but yeah. So uh, I, I didn't watch it, but the the ending of the week was spoiled for me by some like random Twitter account who said who won. But uh, it was just funny because I know the um, I know Ken Jennings. Uh, there's the other guy that I know what he looks like. He has like the he has like the jet black hair and he's a little bit younger. James Holzhauer. Yeah, and then there's a third person who I have no idea who the third person was, and I have a feeling maybe a lot of other people were like that. Who's this third guy? He's <laughs> the guy who played IBM Watson to begin with. He was like the highest. He was the, he made the most money or the first person to hit a million dollars in Jeopardy uh, back okay. in the day. He's the, he's the farthest from today, like the farthest person. I mean, I saw Ken Jennings had a pretty uh, had a pretty fire tweet the other day yeah. because obviously all I'm on, all all I do is I'm on Twitter where he says I'd like to announce that I'm finally following James Hauser on Twitter uh, to to commemorate the following he did to me in Jeopardy all yeah, week. I was like, oh snap! Yeah, it's very <laughs> back and forth, and I will tell you for this, I I've, I've discussed this with my wife is I hate the idea of a double Jeopardy or, or daily double in this because. Mm-hmm. It's all random who gets it, right? And you can mm-hmm. bet as much as you have, or I think a little more. Um, so you could easily, someone could accidentally or, or get it and be pushed ahead by like a far long shot rather than actually seeing who knows more and can play better in the long run. Um, that's the only thing I wish they took out of it. But I, I mean, there's no definitive winner yet. It's, it'll go into next week, but it's definitely been interesting because Alex Trebek had to say bitchin' for one of the questions. <laughs> Uh, our answers, and that was a very fun experience. So, 
Uh, definitely been a, been a good time. I'd recommend that if anyone needs some some weekday stuff. Uh, and then CES was this week, uh, Consumer Electronics Show 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of stuff came out of this. Mike, uh, we've discussed. I finally saw the trailer for this. The upcoming streaming service, uh, Quibi. Ah, uh, Quibi. Yes, the the infamous streaming service that is going to be mobile only, uh, created by ex Disney president or maybe technically he was CEO uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg they finally kind of showed off how the app is going to work and what the content's going to look like at CES they were kind of like the flagship keynote I think they were like the very first keynote of of the of the show this week and uh, it was it was it was interesting for sure I don't know if this type of content is for me uh, but they have some uh, these neat things that they can do. Obviously, you can like time lock the stuff, which is what uh, St- Spielberg wants to do. So he wants to make a creepy show that you can only watch when it's nighttime out. So obviously, if it's a mobile only uh, app, it's going to know where you are when the sun sets and stuff like that. So you're only going to be able to watch the show at night. So I thought that was kind of clever. Um, also, they kind of showed off the the rotating tech. So this is one thing that I uh, some people were saying, well, this is Quibi it's mobile uh it's mobile entertainment so everything is going to be vertical video and just all the content is going to be made vertical video style Mm -hmm. but then i also heard people saying like well there's no reason that you can't do horizontal video and just like turn your phone and watch it kind of the main gimmick was quibi stands for quick bites so every episode is going to be 10 minutes or less and then theoretically your show or season or movie could be as many parts as you want it to be so uh, what they're doing now is now they're giving people the ability to do uh, both vertical and horizontal. And you might be thinking, well, how does that work? Like, why would I want to watch like a cropped version of the movie or show that I'm watching? Because whether it's originally filmed vertical or originally filmed horizontal, if you turn it one way or another, it's going to get cropped no matter what. So they showed off this one example where it looked like the director or cinematographer just kind of tried to frame everything like almost right in the middle of the camera so if you turned it the crop you know was still effective but i feel like in the long run that's not going to be very feasible because you just have to think out your shots like so much it's just going to hinder any sort of like film production so i could see maybe some little shorts maybe taking advantage of that but over the long run like you can't do like a sweeping vista shot in a in a vertical form like you're like you're only going to be able to concentrate on one thing so the cool and clever thing that they added was it's almost like when you switch to vertical video or you switch to horizontal video, you're getting a second screen experience. So two of the examples that they had up on stage was one of them, you're watching it horizontal and you're watching like a, a kind of a creepy thriller movie. And uh, the camera is focusing on a woman on a couch who uh, is answering her uh, video doorbell. And if you turn your phone vertically, you see the live, like the quote unquote live stream from her doorbell. So you get to see what she's saying. So I was like, okay, well that's pretty clever. You get like, it's almost kind of, I was almost like imagining like, you know, the, the Nintendo DS when you had those two screens, like you would mainly play on your top screen, but that second screen down there would have like all your inventory and everything. Mm-hmm. So I, that's kind of how I imagined it, but it's either one or the other. You can't look at them both at the same time. So I, we were kind of talking about it in the in the group chat, and we were all curious, well, how are they going to deliver this video? I mean, that's two video streams, and also this is mobile, so this is going to be like data hogging. And what they kind of ended up saying is uh, the the – the producers are going to deliver two video feeds, but then they're going to stitch them together into technically one video file. So I guess if you're shooting at a high enough resolution, it's still going to be a very big video it, file. It, it sounds like a responsive video. Like we have, we have responsive websites. It's like it's yeah. responding. Yeah, that's what that, that's what I thought too. So the other example was they had um, the actor who played the newest incarnation of Cyclops in the X Men universe. He was also in Ready Player One. I forget Ty Sheridan. What the, yeah, Ty Sheridan. So he he came up on stage and they were debuting a show that he's working on. And uh, the scene that they showed off was he's like kind of stranded in some sort of like winter mountain blizzard. So he's stranded in his car and he's um, so the horizontal video you see is him in his car. But then while he's abandoned in his car, he takes out his phone and he starts like scrolling through Instagram to keep to figure out what his girlfriend's doing that night. So if you turn your phone vertically, it's almost like your phone 
turns into his phone and you get like to see his menu swipe up and you see him like tapping through Instagram. So I actually thought that was kind of cool because that's like there's nothing more immersive than that. Then you turn your phone and it looks like it's almost like somebody's controlling your phone, but it's like through him. So I think there's some really clever things that you can do here. I am just not sure if I'm the type of person that's going to invest in this second screen because I'm 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 like the type of crazy person that's going to get like anxious watching this stuff because I'm be like, oh, do I turn my phone now or now? What am I missing? Oh, I should turn my phone now. No, I got to turn it back because I think I missed something else. Like, like if you've ever played a video game where you have to like monitor a bunch of security cameras, to, like like tech, like Five Nights at Freddy's or something like that to check out anything that's going on. Like I'm just t constantly cycling because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So I feel like it's just going to freak me out. But I thought the tech was cool and this is at least something new in the entertainment industry. So it's $5 with ads, $8 without ads. I believe it comes in April. So, you know, it's important to talk about it on the show because we talk about a lot of streaming stuff and oh. eventually every streaming service gets something superhero or comic book related. So yeah. It's only a matter of time we'll until maybe you're watching. This is not going to happen, but maybe you'd be watching like Iron Man horizontally and then you sw swap it vertically and you see like his heads up display or whatever. You yeah. Know? I mean, I wouldn't go. I don't think Marvel is going to dive into it. I mean, think of the I mean, again, I always think of production, right? My background's film production. How do you mm -hmm. how do you manage this across everything? Will people producers, will the cost be too much to like, yeah, we don't need to do both. We'll just pick one and say, hey, stick in this mode kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, I, I agree it's 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 a lot to to do, but the thing that turned me off is when you said there's a price to it, I'm like, wait, I have to pay to watch ads and this content. I thought it was just gonna be free, ad supported, and then pay to get rid of the ads. And now I don't even want it even more. I'm like, <laughs> I, there's nothing there's no reason I would pay five dollars to watch quick bite content uh on, on this on the service so far so yeah well i mean it sounds like i'm the i'm the quibby shill right now it's just only because i think it's uh cool but yeah. if it makes you feel any better they actually specifically pointed to the amount of ads that you would see per hour and they said for every hour of streaming you're only gonna see i think they said like two and a half minutes of ads so compare that to an hour of cable television you know you're looking at like you know, a very minimal commercial. So, but well, still the fact that you have to pay for it is kind of crazy. So we'll see if it takes off. I don't know. Just like every other streaming service or any other video game console, uh, cough, cough stadia, you need some sort of like killer app for people to want it. So if they get that killer show, you know, who knows, maybe we might be talking about Quibi more. Yeah. I don't think we will. I, I mean, <laughs> number one, I mean, you, you, you use, you know, cable as a thing. I don't have cable. I haven't had cable since I ever, I've never paid for cable <laughs> in my life. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, I can't compare it against that. But also, I mean, I know you, you're big on never watching ads. So would you pay mm -hmm. the $8 one to not watch it or would, uh, I, I'm kind of curious. I'll probably do. They'll probably have like a month long trial or something. But they brought up like the 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 new CEO of T-Mobile, and they said that they're going to be partnering quote partnering with T-Mobile. So who knows? Maybe if you have T-Mobile, you might get this for free anyway. <laughs> so uh, so a, a second rate cell service provider is giving a second rate <laughs> streaming service. That's well, there you go. <laughs> that sounds great. So awesome. Well, that's okay, Mike. Because you know what we'll do? We'll just look forward to all the stuff we can watch. Uh, and, and do on a, on a regular format, such as Star Wars. The biggest thing that we didn't talk about this year at Star Wars, um, the convention, because we didn't go, but it's Project Luminous. Are you familiar with this this project they've, they've said? I have no earthly idea what Project Luminous is. Okay. So apparently this, you know, we, we've talked um, about interconnected storytelling and how they really couldn't do that with Star Wars, uh, you know, trying to transfigure everything into the 40 year old you know story right they can't mm -hmm. do that so at at, at, at uh, the star wars um i forget what it's called the convention they have every year um they are doing what's called project luminous which is the interconnected storytelling not really to anything skywalker saga but of star wars properties and there are rumors that the first one for that will actually be a video game in 2021 uh that um they're making i think it's maybe a first person or a third person game that's not the the fallen order star wars game but a, a different one um but this would go so far as to include comics shows books and more with the emphasis on the comics and the books um out the gate because it's easy to 
write those parallels kind of together. Um, but that they've talked about Project Luminous is being set in the High Republic era, which is like teenage Yoda era of stuff, long, <laughs> long time ago. But that the High Republic is where the next movie trilogy will head as well to tie all this together. All right. Well, I guess uh, it sounds like Yoda is our through line through the Star Wars universe. They uh, they axed off the Skywalker like a scene in the last movie. So like, what are we going to use now? Well, let's well, use a little green guy. Everyone seems to love these green people. I don't think I don't think Yoda's the thing, but that's just to put how far back this is. It's not like hey, it was you know three months before uh, the Phantom Menace. Uh, we get to see you know the origin story of Jar Jar Binks because I definitely know you're. You're dying to see that one, Mike. <laughs> uh, they can go ahead and leave that in a comic book. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine, though, because we're going to get to see some older Jar Jar Binks in the Kenobi show. Uh, <laughs> this is the, the rumor that they're looking to bring in this older, bearded CGI Jar Jar Binks into the show to possibly... I think the goal is to maybe wrap up his story. Uh, at, you at know what? Fine. Go, you know what? Go ahead and do it. I think, uh, I think Jar Jar has been out in the world for so long now, I think somebody can find a way to redeem his character in some way. Because, I mean, we're all mad at Jar Jar, uh, not for who he was, but just that he, that he existed to begin with. Like, you know, Jar Jar on a surface he's like a cartoon character i'm not surprised he he would exist in the star wars universe i just don't think people believe that he could uh, be a fill-in senator wasn't he like a fill-in senator at well a point he in was time? the one who voted for no confidence who got palpatine elected he was essentially palpatine's shill to make all this happen and get him as uh, emperor well it sounds like he's got some regrets he probably gonna grow an awesome beard and you know what? It, it, in an Obi Wan series, you kind of—I feel like you do want him to like just uh, have a reunion with some sort of character. You know, who the hell's that going to be? So make a Jar Jar. That'll be a sweet moment. Mm-hmm. He'll probably die. They'll probably <laughs> kill him off somehow. He'll sacrifice himself. Something. I don't think they're going to keep him around forever. But I mean, you mentioned you started. Uh, you you showed me the list of the Clone Wars episodes, and you started watching that for the Star Wars. Yeah, I was. I I'm. Almost 100% positive you've told me about this list before, but uh, I had forgotten about it. But I had a, I had a, um, a friend out here who told me that, oh, there's this uh, list on the official Star Wars website that tells you the order to watch the Clone Wars in. And I was like, you know what? That sounds familiar. So I'll give them props for reminding me it existed. And I'm sure I'll give you props for telling me that it existed to begin with. I just happen to not remember. Uh, but I was kind of shocked to see that the uh, CG uh, Star Wars Clone Wars was so... F- um, chronologically fractured I guess at some point in time like I scrolled through the list and it looks like it kind of normalizes once you kind of move your way through the series but uh, yeah the first two episodes and the movie I guess all focus around this kind of like green emerald crystal planet but it's strange because like one of the episodes is in season one one of the episodes is in season two and like technically like the movie is first so it's very strange I don't understand like how that happened in production but so far it's so far it's been fun uh uh it's a very well directed show very cinematic for something that was kind of geared towards you know kids so I'm having a good time yeah I I think you know the first season you've watched the movie right because you said you were watching the movie. I'm I'm like halfway through the movie because it's the uh, hardest thing to watch. It is oh it is the lowest point of the show the the whole I show. Mean, I, it seems to be pretty much I guess on par technically with how it looks. So, but um, yeah, so far it's been all right. Yeah, uh, the movie it, it introduced me to Ahsoka, so gotta get to know her. Yeah, because if you look at this, the, I mean, this list does show you like um, I'm, I'm in season one, kind of watching it in the background, like episode twenty two of season one actually takes place in the middle of season three uh chronologically i guess is, is i wouldn't know if it's chronologically or like hey this is a recommended watching order for plot points that pick up later um but you know they do do uh, you know just to tell you you watch earth's mightiest heroes right mm-hmm. they do some they upgrade the cgi for more motion uh, in detail but they also give the characters some upgraded looks as the series progresses as well so you're right. not looking at the same outfit the same like Ahsoka looks so young in this uh, and I'm used to her like older model um, as she ages up so um, I, I definitely I, I think there's some some great things here but I've been watching the background I really uh, have enjoyed myself going back to it as well so um, I'm glad I'm glad you are Mike I'm glad you're having a good time you don't sound down on it so that, that's a plus <laughs> 
Cause... Yeah, maybe uh, it'll uh, revitalize my Star Wars fandom. Yeah, I, I think you're gonna really enjoy it towards the end of it. And we've got what a month and a about a month till the season two comes back or season seven. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I got a lot of episodes to watch, so I'll be at it for a while. Yeah, that's fine because we don't have anything else on Disney Plus to watch, Mike. Nothing else coming out for a while. <laughs> Even later this year, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is coming out, and we get our uh, some first. I would say first, this is some more looks at our, at the characters Bucky Barnes, Sharon Carter, and even Baron Zemo. Uh, looks like they're filming in the CD nighttime scene here with these reds and greens. Uh, I really like Bucky's arm. Uh, he's wearing the rubber prosthetic, you know, to make it look metal the whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in this, it looks a little fractured, doesn't it? Um, I feel like it's yeah, like it's forearm. Yeah, uh, it's hard to tell if it's like fractured or. Is his Wakanda paint job like peeling off, which is hard to imagine because I would think anything made in Wakanda would like last for a millennia. But uh, yeah, it's just I'm looking I'm really looking forward to the show because Winter Soldier is my favorite MCU movie. Mm -hmm. And this is just giving me more of that. Uh, So bring it on, please. Yeah, there's some more set photos out there as well, because every once in a while I come across them on my Instagram explore page. And yeah, there's some like more day shots out there. There's like a motorcycle involved too so you get to see Bucky with his arm and some other shots as well so well my favorite rad. my favorite one of this is when you get to Baron Zemo and he's got this big cheesy ass smile on his face <laughs> and I'm like that looks like a crazy man uh but he's wearing his purple cape his purple you know looks like a coat over him over his coat is that where he's just wearing it on his shoulders and purple gloves I'm like he is going full on you know eccentric villain here like I don't know what happened to him but um, it did make me remember that, you know, Zemo tried to, did get Bucky's, you know, programming to work against him in Civil War. And I'm like, oh, we get to see some of the out, the, the fallout from that, of him chasing him across, you know, the world or whatever. So, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this. I'm very, very excited to see more about this. Yeah. And then, uh, sometime next year in 2021, we'll get the Loki show. Uh, and they, the casting call says they might be looking to cast Kid Loki for this series. Now, Will it be Kid Loki or a flashback? I don't know, but, you know, there is a lot of, you know, I assume Loki time traveling is what's going on in the show. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I well, I guess it depends uh, because we know in order to time travel, you need like a whole bunch of uh, Tony Stark tech to jump around. Uh, but the Tesseract is more just about space mm-hmm. moving around uh, just locationally. But who knows, throw in some Asgardian magic with the Tesseract. Maybe Loki picks up, up some sort of like one of those time travel gems from somebody else. H- who knows? I don't know. But uh, flashback, sure. Yeah, so, I mean... Um... I guess if we want to learn more about Loki, there's not much of a future for him, you know? Um, Yeah, he's dead, people. He ain't coming back. Yeah, he died pretty early on in Infinity War, and that's, like, been two years ago now, so... Oh, man. Being being on social media and also being a person that likes these comic book movies... Like like I said earlier, you get recommended stuff in your feed, and every once in a while you come across, like, these huge Tom Hiddleston Loki fans. And I saw someone the other day who sincerely thought it was bad storytelling to redeem Loki uh, at the beginning of Infinity War and then kill him off. They were just like, no, that's bad storytelling. You shouldn't have Loki finally redeem himself and then kill him off. You know, he deserves better. Bring back Loki. And it's just like, no, it's Did, not going to happen. Didn't he redeem himself <laughs> in every movie he was in except yeah, he's always he's always doing that shit. Yeah. He, 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 uh, he was digging his own grave his whole life. Yeah, you never know what's... I mean, he really... At the end of Ragnarok was him going to get... The, the the headpiece to kill, you know, Hela. Like, mm-hmm. and that was like five minutes before Infinity War started. So, I don't know. Those Loki fans, they're, they're hardcore. <laughs> uh, first rumor, now denied, uh, was that Hawkeye, the production on the show, was delayed indefinitely. Um, so, it's not going to happen, but they were saying that it was changes to the MCU story necessitated a production delay like they wanted to get some larger ongoing plot points introduced first hmm. they're not even talking about filming this till like late 2021 so i don't know everyone was like we don't know who came up with this rumor but there's no way it could be delayed and if it is it's like a month 
or two. Yeah, and if all of these are rumors, and if none of this is true, I wouldn't be surprised if something like this happens at some point in time, Mm -hmm. because when you're dealing with just movies, when Feige just had the deal with the movies, you know, you're talking about, uh, like, juggling, like, at most, like, three scripts a year. Uh, but now when you start to throw in movies and streaming ser- and streaming shows and each streaming show has like, you know, six to eight scripts per that. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot more going on over there. So I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in time, maybe something does need to be delayed or pushed just so it makes a little bit more yeah. sense. Uh, we'll just have to cross our fingers and hopefully uh, nothing bad comes well, out of that, you know. Well, I think, you know, they've moved up an entire I mean, WandaVision a whole year. Uh, and then they added three more shows in, and you know what was it? Miss Marvel's possibly in production in April, so they may rearrange the release dates, but like not like it's going to be huge. I don't think it's going to be like Hawkeye delayed for three years kind of thing. So yeah, I mean this is just like making dinner. You can't if the if the potatoes aren't boiled yet, you can't make the mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. So uh, and people want to eat on time, and uh, we uh, in this household we we are very bad at uh, throwing uh, dinner parties and having food ready on time. So uh, I understand how hectic it can get in the proverbial kitchen. You guys sound like you're the reason they created courses for menus so the first course was this was done first so this is your first course item yeah eat your mashed potatoes the gravy will come out in 20 minutes yeah. I, I understand you might want it together it's just not happening yeah today. well i mean it, it, we're in 2020 now you we eat them separately very much so. <laughs> uh they're also was talking about Haley steinfeld has a deal with apple plus television uh for a show there and then if they wait a little while longer she'd be more open up to her schedule for filming to really lock her in as the Kate Bishop for this role. Well, she should probably hitch her wagon to uh, Marvel and Disney over Apple streaming uh, because <laughs> anybody, anybody out there, please tell me if you watch that Jason Momoa uh, show, see, I have not heard a they, single soul yet. I did. I it think was, I, it's called Aquaman, but that's a different <laughs> kind of see. I feel like every other week I'm asking people if they watch that show yet and haven't heard it. Haven't heard anything yet. Well, it, they give it away. And I'm not even watching it. I got a new <laughs> phone for work, and they're like, here's a free year of Apple TV. I'm like, no, thank you. I'm fine. <laughs> I've got better things to watch. So we'll keep you posted on the Hawkeye situation for sure. Kevin Feige out here making the rounds, making people's dreams come true, Mike. Uh, apparently, they is in talks with ABC to develop a mysterious new Marvel TV show for the, you know, over-the-air network television channel. Um and ABC says conversations about what a Marvel and ABC show with Kevin Feige might look like are going on now. So would this be like, hey, these are characters we could never use. Have them. <sighs> yeah, because just, we don't need to fit them into our bigger plan. I mean, honestly, I was kind of looking forward to the shows leaving network television. Uh, just because uh, Kevin Feige just keeps telling us these pr- these streaming shows, these are premium, these are primo movie quality stuff here that integrates into the MCU. So if you're making like something that's going to be on television, I just I don't see how you can get excited about could, it. You know, I mean it could I mean it could be I mean it could be one of those things like um, ancillary. I mean this could be like an Agents of Shield thing, but more more like hey we can actually reference things because we know the marvel schedule for the like the next three years kind of thing rather than like marvel tv like well we just got to make things up as we go here we, we don't know what we're really doing i mean unless they are going to try to do something maybe a little bit more premium and off the beaten path you know maybe not the cleanup crew type of idea that mm-hmm. was in production and then got shelved because we all saw, saw powerless was it called powerless what was it yeah, called what was uh, it? yeah it was powerless yeah no, um, well... They got canceled before it even like got off the ground, it felt like. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, maybe they'll do a, a similar tangential idea to where they don't have to deal with it too much. But uh, I just don't want to see any more 22-episode orders for a network Marvel show because that's you're just stretching that budget uh, a really long well, mile. So just do kind of like what, you know, NBC is doing with, like, The Good Place and some other shows. Like, just do, like, eight episodes or something like that. Right, exactly. And then you can make that work in your schedule a little better. They're like, hey, make mm-hmm. these episodes and then release them rather yeah. than and also, make them and every also, week. Also, I'm wondering if maybe, I mean, Kevin Feige, he is he is at the tippy top now of uh, of Marvel and also kind of related close to Disney. So I'm wondering if maybe like Bob Iger was just like, hey, we need something on ABC so people actually watch our television network. Uh, Feige, I need you to make a TV show over there or at least mm-hmm. go over there and talk to somebody because there's not too many people above the Feigster anymore. So it, it seems like 
normally this isn't something that he would want to do. So right. uh, I guess we'll see where it goes. Maybe he's just humoring them. You know, hey, we'll just talk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this could be something, you know, like, again, how do you fit Jessica Jones into the real world? Maybe they could make the Jessica Jones TV show for, you know, ABC. Um, because even if I look at the Netflix show, there really wasn't anything huge on there that made it R-rated, you know? Like uh, like any kind of, like, procedurals or anything like that. Um I mean, Jessica Jones had a lot of sex, so yeah. they'd have to tone that down for ABC. For yeah, they're, sure. they're not going to definitely do the same version, but I'm just saying, like, like they could do a like a detective, like a CSI, you know, MCU kind of thing uh, with with characters. I don't know. There's 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 things out there. Who knows what Shield, what will Sword will even hold for us, uh, and seeing what those you know characters are. But uh, I don't think we're going to get any, any more Agent Carters or Agents of Shield. Uh, kind of shows going forward either what was there another one they did no no they never spun it off the uh the mockingbird show they never mm-hmm. did so also kevin feige said that the mcu will not use technology to include dead actors in their shows movies oh I, well that's probably uh that's a good call you yeah know. everyone i mean everyone does the same where they, they compare you know their, their their nerdums together like you know star wars and marvel stuff like it. and star wars has at least on two occasions included dead actors in their movies. One was Tarkin, that he was a completely CGI, and it felt weird watching it. And the other one was, you know, reusing old footage and digitally changing backgrounds for Leia in the newest movie. But, you know, I don't, I think that that's different for Star Wars because they're telling, you know, nine movies over 40 years, and those people are, you know, dead. Uh, dead, dead. But Marvel always looks forward. Um, so I, I think we won't have to worry about, you know, seeing any more Stan Lees uh, popping up weirdly in our in our shows because they, they mm. filmed them and you know, years ago and put them back in there. So it's sad, but I'm, I'm okay with this. Uh, the Eternals, uh, they released a high resolution, uh, D 23 concept art here of that celestial overlooking some planets, which we assume was earth, but you know, there are four planets right back to back there. I don't, I don't think it's earth, but this celestial, if you look at this image, looks like the back of his head's being blown out. Uh, because of like the splattery, gooey stuff, like you know the disembodiedness no, of it. Oh, yeah, may, maybe a little bit. Yeah, there is something going on back there. Uh, and people are saying that maybe this is the the version that nowhere gets killed, and they were kind of doing a comparison of, hey, does this look like nowhere? Because even the art, the, like the way his head is positioned, looks exactly like the way nowhere is. But I don't see that fourth eye in the middle of his eyes. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was doing. I was looking to, like yeah. it, it's strange because like they in the Guardians of the Galaxy they they are mining the Celestial's head for you know resources and stuff like that. So I I I, I would wager to say like this concept art in the Eternals it kind of looks like the face is already ready to mine. It's yeah. like got these holes in the front and kind of like got these tracks running across it. But that really wouldn't make any sense. Like the Celestial is like oh I'm just here ready to mine whenever I die. Uh, but yeah, you, you're kind of missing that fourth eye. Um, it also looks like the nowhere head at the very top right, like something like a puncture went through the skull and out the other side. Yeah, and also it seems like the eyes are a little bit more recessed from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy too. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. I guess there's a way that you could spin it, but um, either way, if we talk about the original concept art, this is really rad vibes. I mean, just imagining like kind of like these giant beasts that are just out there in the cosmos that just there's really no explanation behind them. Not who yet. Knows if you, who knows if you can talk or reason to them? Who cares if they even care about what, you? What kind of they're abilities so do they even have? Yeah, it's just like so creepy. What is it? What does it? What does it physically take? to kill a celestial are, are we talking just like an entire race of a planet has to band together and they might just barely kill one or are we talking like oh if captain marvel just you know gets a good punch in is she strong enough to kill a celestial i i'm kind of curious where the power level because as we all know one is dead so how did that happen did somebody two, just two is dead trick? ego was considered a celestial as well yeah Oh, oh yeah, I guess that's right. So, like, do you just have to, like, trick them into, like, being near a supernova, and then that's a big enough bomb to kill them? Mm-hmm. I'm kind of – I'm curious about the scale of it. You go in the so ear, look- you plant a bomb at the brain, just like they did in, <laughs> on uh, in Guardians 2, and then that kills them. <laughs> or if we talk in scale, get Ant-Man in there and just – how big can you grow, Ant-Man? Let's find yeah, out. Yeah, actually, Giant-Man. Send Giant-Man in. Uh, mm-hmm. Right up his butt. They're, 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 they're going to do the <laughs> Thanos thing, but with the Celestials. Yeah, there you go. Right up the butt. Yeah. <laughs> so – 
Yeah, all right. Well, Eternals is coming out in November this year. You know, they're filming it. I'm excited to see this. I'm thinking, you know, Mike, we're a couple weeks from the Super Bowl. Is Eternals going to be our first trailer at the Super Bowl? That year? would be fun. I mean, Disney Marvel, they always show up big, so it just depends on what it's going to be. I'm very excited to see what that is. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Um, Scott Derrickson and Marvel have split over creative differences on this movie. However, he will remain as an executive producer, not a writer, uh, for this film, which makes me think it might not be as bad as it sounds normally if he's staying as an EP rather well, than I mean, kicking him I off completely. Look, I, I feel like you could honestly look at it either way. Uh, it could be the other way around of he's been on the project long enough that legally if you kick him off, he's got to retain some sort of credit. So that could be the way that they're spinning it. Usually, like uh, one thing that's crazy is when these splits happen is we're never going to know. We're yeah. only going to be able to just uh, mull around, throw out ideas, what we think happened. But it's in everybody's best interest who works on the project to split um, as amicably as possible because you want to keep working in the industry and you can't just trash the other one or it's just not going to look good either way. So we'll never really know. So we just have to kind of wager is this good or bad that the director is leaving at this time and who could possibly fill in yeah i don't know uh, i mean this is this is pretty relatively new new news but i don't think this is something that just happened on like thursday and everyone was like hey sorry you know here's the yeah. news like five minutes later it seems like most of the internet is thinking that he left because they were trying to backpedal this idea that that, that this movie was going to be like a straight up horror movie. Now, I think most uh, most uh, um, most sane people out there never thought Marvel was going to make straight up horror movie, but right. it would be kind of cool to see something in that vein. So, are they trying to step back from that vein? I, I mean, having the word having the word madness in your movie title, things like you're going to get well, something crazy. I will tell you right now. I've told the people this: when you think of Doctor Strange, what do you think of, Mike? In Marvel Cinematic. Uh, well, I liked him in uh, Infinity War. Right, yeah. Nobody cares about his movie. Nobody cared about <laughs> Scott Derrickson with Doctor Strange. He was learning about the magic. We care what Christopher Marcus, Stephen McFeely, and the Russo brothers did to make him a badass in Infinity War, where he took on Thanos, right? So, is Scott Derrickson relevant to Doctor Strange to that point that we need him back? Or is, are we just clinging on to, like, hey, we like to have the same director, you know, over time, but... By the time he gets here, this this character will have grown, what, 10 years uh, since we first kind of met him? Mm-hmm. So is Scott Derrickson relevant? I, uh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, as an EP, you know, he could probably, you know, I think we're going to get a little bit of scary things. But, you know, with Wanda Vision moving around, does that tie into this delay? Or not delay, this this difference? Like, yeah, how are they changing the way thing? And then the Hawk, I think, what are they changing in the background for these stories that we don't know yet? I, I, I'm just curious who they'll replace him with. And yeah. I just hope it's not another, I just hope it's not like a yes person, uh-huh. you know, somebody who only has like maybe one or two movies under their belt and they're just going to listen to what uh, their bosses tell them to do. I would like to see them bring in somebody with a vision to kind of um, appease the worried masses out here that uh, a director just left. So obviously this would never happen because I feel like he's attached to everything and then he drops out. But, you know, somebody like a Guillermo del Toro or something like mm-hmm. that, somebody with the... Um, with the pre- with the uh, with the preference to kind of like the horror and the I, creepy, and then somebody with like a proven vision. I don't think he would. Uh, I'd put him on Blade again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean that would be cool. I don't. I, I feel like Guillermo del Toro is not looking to to play nice yeah. in a cinematic universe to begin with. He, he seems to like to do his own things. He's the type of guy that wants to start his own cinematic universe. That worked so, out really but, you know, well with Pacific Rim. I don't, <laughs> I don't tell him that. I, well, I mean, it started. He should have. He should have stuck with it, and then we might we may have had something fun going. But usually, when I think of the first Doctor Strange movie, I think of the first Ant Man movie. Those kind of movies are on similar playing fields for me, quality wise. They both have cool stuff in them, but I kind of I was kind of hoping for a little bit more out of both of them. So as we know, Peyton Reed continued on to the sequel of Ant Man, and I didn't really like the sequel that much. It was just kind of a downward trend for the Ant Man specific movies. So who knows? I could look. I could look at that as a point of saying, oh yeah, maybe Scott Dickerson should leave, and we should bring somebody else in, so we don't see the same thing happen to Doctor Strange. You know, as like you said, they grew in between those uh, those yeah. two movies. Ant Man so. didn't. That's the that's the worst part about it. You know, I guess. Um, 
I, I just, I, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, I'm sad, I'm sad he's leaving. But Scott Jackson is only the third director to ever leave a Marvel project he was already announced to. Uh, with Edgar Wright and Ant-Man being the first one, like we talked about. And Patty Jenkins leaving Thor The Dark World. But no one was going to win in Thor The Dark World. Uh, <laughs> Alan Taylor didn't win either. Um, so, but Patty Jenkins went on to gain Wonder Woman, you know? So it's not like, you know, is it is it the director? Is it the, the vision? Is it, what what's... What is it and who can they get to do this? I think, you know, we're going to get probably, you know, um, I, I think we're going to get someone like a Peyton Reed who has, you know, some good movies in his background, but nothing that's like going to knock, like that we don't think about at the forefront to get the first one done. And then maybe they'll probably move Expedite Doctor Strange 3 along a little quicker before um, Benedict Cumberbatch like ages out of the role or something like that. So Yeah, e- either way, I'm not too worried about it. If we were talking like... Uh, solo timeline where we lost our directors like while like kind of I think shooting was happening like a Star Wars uh, kind of thing yeah I, I would be I would be more worried but the, this seems to be relatively earlier in the timeline so we'll see do they get James Wan <laughs> oh, God, that would be that would that would be that would be interesting yeah I'll say that that's all right that's okay we got Taika Waititi doing Thor four Love and Thunder. So we're still good, right? We still got him mm-hmm. going on for this. However, now Christian Bale is in talks to join the superhero film. Uh, and this is his first outing since Batman uh, to be be a superhero. Um, people are consumed. Are, are, I've heard a rumor that people think he will be Beta Ray Bill, who is also rumored to debut in this movie. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to play a CGI character if we get Christian Bale in here. He looks like a horse. I think they're going to play a, like he's going to have FaceTime. You know what I mean? Like if you get Christian yeah. Bale, he's going to be an actor, not in a CGI suit. Uh, yeah. It does kind of seem like that, you know, kind of like how uh, we have, Oh God, I can't even think of his name who plays group. Um, Vin, Diesel. Uh, Vin Diesel. That's right. Uh, yeah. It seems like he would just kind of lend the voice, just like how Matthew McConaughey is not out there doing motion capture for rocket. Uh, oh, you mean Brett Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper, sorry, I, I get those guys mixed up a lot. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Christian Bale seems more like a face actor. You know, you, it, he's like infamous for like physically changing his body for roles to adapt to a character. It does seem strange that he would do a horse character. So, yeah. I mean, if he wants to do it, yeah, go ahead. Maybe he wants like the easy paycheck uh, and he's just going to lend his voice to the character. But uh, I, think I, he's do vi- like- I think he's the villain. Oh yeah, I mean that could be that could be. I, he, he he's has pretty a, villainous. He has I mean a, he's inf- he's infamous for losing his shit on on set. It, exactly. <laughs> he's always played the hero, right? Like you know, he's probably looking for something different. He's like, if I'm going from Batman, I don't want to play like the next big hero. I want to play something against that. If he's you know trying to challenge himself, so what? If, I mean, I, there's a character in the comic books called Gore the God Butcher, um, who has this necro sword, and his jo- his his goal is to go out and kill gods across the universe or deities. Um, and, um, that would be really cool for him to play that character instead. Uh, yeah. Of, of any sort of, adult. any sort of like sword that kills God sounds really rad. <laughs> yeah. And the necro sword was created by null. Who's actually the God of the venom symbiotes too. So it's like in the Marvel comics, it's like a whole thing. So that sword is pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, it's actually the same sword that killed nowhere that, that cut his head off in the comic books. So hey, it's, it's all coming together. It's got some history in there, but I mean, I'm yeah. Christian Bale's gonna probably be the villain. I really want to see Beta Ray Bill. I'm a huge fan. I've been a fan for a while, so hopefully they bring him in here and give him a, a hammer worthy of of uh, you know his him being Beta Ray Bill. Mm-hmm. Um, but also we've you know like I said we've got um what's her name Natalie Portman's returning and uh, Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie is returning as well. So a lot of moving parts on this Thor movie. I'm very excited to see. How how wild it gets, but now we're going to talk about what everyone's really kind of wanting us to talk about, Mike. The new <laughs> mutants trailer. Wow, the second yeah. one in two years. Yeah, right. we left off the last podcast saying this is coming the next day. If only we recorded on Mondays and not Sundays, we could be talking about the new mutants. And I think I said maybe quote I've never been so excited for a trailer. So. I, I, I don't know. I think I was just expecting a lot because, like you said, it's been a while since we've heard from this movie. And, yeah, I mean, there's there's some stuff in it, but I feel like I'm just kind of 
left with the same feeling when I originally watched the movie of like, okay, there might be some fun stuff in here, but ultimately I feel like it's all going to be moot because none of this is still, none of this is going to continue even after watching this trailer. Well, there is no guarantee that it won't continue. They could make it work because nothing in this says again, X-Men or anything like that. And a lot of these characters, I mean, I would, you know, they could be B characters, whatever. I actually had a really good time with this trailer. I mean, the, the horror, like when we talked about Dr. Strange, not going full horror, their horror elements are still in this. I feel, um, jump scares. There's like what a screaming sound that converts into like a door squeaking at one point for, uh, Maisie Williams. It's like that claustrophobicness, uh, of it. Everything's dark. This whole, I think this whole movie is set at night. It looks like, isn't it? Like that's what it feels <laughs> well, like. It's snowy in nighttime. Well- yeah, well, I mean, we'll talk about some of the new characters that popped up in this, but if you want to see them, you got to crank the brightness on your screenshot yeah. of your phone if you want to see them. It is it right. is dark. The 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 one the one plus side about this, I don't remember if we brought this up last week or not, but I think it's been reported that the director uh, he's he's saying this is the movie that I wanted yeah. to make. So uh, there was we talked about reshoots a while ago. Uh, it seems like they were trying to fix things. I guess those reshoots have possibly been thrown out. Yeah. By by now so he said like this is my original vision so worst comes to worst we're at least seeing what the the director wanted yeah. us to see because fox wanted to to reshoot some stuff i think to make it fit in a dark phoenix or something like that mm-hmm. and then well that didn't really go over well for anybody and then they got bought so i'm i think i think marvel's like well we don't really want to spend any more money on it if anything i think the effects look good i really enjoyed magic soul's arm and like her metal arm and her soul sword with their portals. I'm actually surprised they include all of us uh, for this character in here. And I like you talking about the villain of everything is Demon Bear, uh, who is ha- haunting Mirage, which is the, um, the main girl there. Uh, you, she gets a lot of FaceTime in this trailer. Um, and I don't know what he looks like, but I will tell you the thing I, I was looking for, and uh, I, I saw at the end there, is Lockheed. The purple dragon from the comic books, who's known for hanging out with Kitty Pride, is flying around in this battle at the end. There, it looks like. Yeah, it, it does look like we see a little bit of a dragon. So, okay, so we got like a dragon, we got like a, a mutant bear. So it's like, where are these things coming from? I mean, I I've always been like a fan of the character of Kitty Pride, and it's been cool that she's had like um like a dragon as a sidekick. But it's like when it comes to like a live action movie, how, how do you explain this little dragon that exists? I'm kind of curious he's an, how he's they an do alien that. in the comic books. <laughs> but this one, like a magic has a in the first trailer, we we I had to go back several years to watch this first trailer. She's holding a fl- um, a stuffed version of a purple dragon. Is is Danny Mirage's power? To, I think to bring dreams to life or something like that. So is she oh. turning some of these things to life in this? Th- there's really not a lot of story points here other than the fact they're trapped in this insane asylum and they all wear the same outfit. So I think this is like yeah. a long weekend. Yeah, basically from a story perspective, it seems to be the same thing. These mutants are in a school. They're trapped in it, trying to get out. Things are there, I think it's a hospital, not school. Uh, well, yeah. Either yeah. way, uh, and we School and uh, it's a, com- a, a a locked in compound, if a brick yeah. compound, if you will. And then the yeah, like you said, the the newest thing is kind of maybe this third act finale we're seeing a preview of. Who knows? Um, yeah. But it, I, I I think the craziest thing about this trailer is that it even came out. There's a release date attached to it. There is no mention of it also exclusively streaming on Hulu or Disney Plus. Yeah. You know, like, and I would have thought if that's something that they were going to do, they would have pulled it out of the bag right here and right now. So uh, it seems like any sort of tricks that they would have attached to this movie, we would have already known by now. Um, so the I, I it's weird to say the hopes of it coming out on streaming, but if it was going to be doing anything unique, um, I, I think they would have told us in that trailer to get us hyped up. So um, yeah, I guess it's actually going to be in theaters. It's going to be in so. theaters. It's happening it's here. <laughs> Um, I mean, these actors look so young because they filmed this like three, four years ago. So I'm, I'm excited to see kind of what's going on with this and, and how, it, you know, at the end of the day, how does it pop up kind of thing. So uh, that, that's fine. The th- I think this next trailer we're going to talk about is probably the thing I didn't think was going to happen uh, the <laughs> most. And that's Morbius. The yeah. trailer is coming out tomorrow, if only recorded on Mondays. And there is a leaked two. I have two leaked images from this trailer, Mike, we're going to talk about. One you don't know about yet. Ooh. Um, so the first leaked image, I believe this will be probably, I'm going to guess the final shot of the trailer. What do you, what do you want to say? 
Uh, yeah, it does kind of seem like a final shot, or at least the hero shot. Like when I'm making thumbnails for the podcast and a new trailer comes out, I'm always looking for like the moment, the one eye grabbing frame. And I feel like this would be the yeah. frame once we eventually so, watch the trailer in, I guess, less than 24 hours or maybe around 24 hours. I would, hours. Say, I think it's 12 hours now is what we're looking for here. Uh, this is Jared Leto, red eyes, white skinned fangs, and some fucky thing with his nose. Uh, <laughs> Truly, truly Morbius here from the comic books in this shot, uh, and I've, I was even I went a little little farther and found the reference panel from the comic book um, to show you guys what it looks like here. So uh, they pulled this straight from the comic book, Mike. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess if you're looking at the villain universe that they're building over at uh, Sony, we've never been upset with the way things have looked. <laughs> like when we finally got around to seeing Venom in the trailers, we're just like, yeah, that that looks exactly like Venom. Like, good on you. But they made a really crappy story out of it. You know, some people will disagree or, you know, say they look past it. So, yeah, it's not – I wouldn't say it's too difficult to make a good-looking Morbius. So I'm glad that they, they were I think able to it, achieve I think that. They could have – I think they could have gone a little too far. Like, I think they could have gone, like, or not even – remember, we talk, I told you about this. The first Venom trailer didn't even give us Venom. Mm-hmm. It was just, like, some disembodied voice and a lot of scenes where the CG wasn't added yet. And I'm like, what is going on here? Where is the Venom? I think they were like, okay, people want to see the character. Here's the new – here's what he's going to look like. But, Mike, again, you, you, you kind of bring up the thing. Who's the villain? Who's the bad guy in this? Is there another Morbius that looks no. like him from another planet? I don't, I don't know. The villain will probably end up being inconsequential or whatever. Like, uh, I, if they keep the character the same way, I believe Morbius is some sort of professor, right, or scientist, if yeah. you will. Uh, so maybe he has some sort of, like, boss that's trying to capture him so he can, like, recreate whatever changed him so he can sell it so it's just like so it's like okay that's probably going to be the villain but really the probably the um the struggle for our hero is just going to be dealing with turning into a vampire and and possibly bloodlust uh who knows i just i just want it to be a a a good movie i mean we know jared leto can act uh Uh, (laughs) whether or not the character fits in the movie that he's in is a different story a la joker but you know he's won oscars before for portrayals of uh people in serious uh uh claimed movies so i i think he's up to the task i just i just hope the i hope the movie works and just like last week it sounds like we're getting another trailer tomorrow yep we're getting a trailer tomorrow on this finally this image looks cool however i will tell you the newest leaked image actually shows Spider-Man in this movie. What? And, oh, okay. I'm looking. It's a poster. <laughs> it is a poster. And he says murderer, which I believe is tied to, you know, the current state of far from home. Right. Mm-hmm. But Jay Jones, but that, that suit that is, that looks, that's Sam Raimi. That's that the looks same, like Raimi. That's the same Raimi suit. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that is taken from the Spider-Man uh, three game, I think video game or something like that. So, um, that's the same Raimi. So is this tied to the same Raimi spider? Oh my God. That would be awesome. Holy crap. Okay. So now like I got wheels spinning in my brain right now. So if Sony is okay with making an animated universe where it's just diving around, grabbing different Spider-Mans, how crazy would it be if they're just like low key rebooting the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man universe? I mean, it would just be nuts. I mean, and I feel like I would, I would that would retroactively make me okay with Venom because I know that Venom belongs to a different weird shattered universe, even though it doesn't make sense because I guess the symbiote was still also in that movie. I don't know. Maybe they could find a way to make it work still. I, I don't know, yeah. but I love that idea of, of possibly this Morbius coming across an old, like imagine if Tobey Maguire was Spider-Man again, he suited up, he played the older version of like a grizzled Spider-Man. Oh, I love that idea. It's not going to happen. No. It's just not, it's just too, it's just too confusing and complicated for an audience, but I don't think it is. I, I don't I, think they care as much as we do. I love that idea because then it's just like, yeah, do whatever the hell you want with Spidey because it's not affecting the Tom Holland Spidey, which everyone really cares about. Right. Well, I mean, but if they do it and they're still using J. Jonah Jameson in the MCU, are they somehow like alternate universes? Because Into the Spider-Verse <laughs> was received with open arms, man. 
and that mm-hmm. had different the idea of different universes and stuff like that appearing. So I, I I don't know is this is this in the Spider-Man three Sam Raimi universe? I don't know, but that that shot from tomorrow's trailer we're gonna know tomorrow. <laughs> I think we'll know. So, uh, but th- before that even shut shut up, we talked about this. There are plans for J. Jonah Jameson for uh, as a uh, J.K. Uh, Simmons to appear in this movie as well. So, oh man, is, is, is it is it is it the <laughs> Raimi verse? Would that be wild? Uh, let's do it. That would be wild, and I'm on board. Yeah, that would. No one would expect that. Literally, how mm-hmm. tw- what's thirteen years later coming back to the Raimi verse? I mean, we've been doing this podcast for years now, and we didn't even come up with that idea even for a second. Yeah, didn't even <laughs> think about it. So mm-hmm. that's wild. I love it. Lock and Key, the infamous graphic novel from Joe Hill, the daughter or not daughter, the son of Stephen King. What's his real name? Something's King, but he goes by the name Joe Hill to to get. You know, away from his dad's stuff is the first trailer for this Netflix series was released, and there are shots in this trailer that are not in the first three volumes of this series, Mike. And I'll tell you because I just read yeah. all three volumes this week, <laughs> three of six. So, um, well, it sounds like they're going to be doing uh, some spanning over all those uh, stories, not holding anything back, as Chris would like to say. They are not, but they're also holding stuff back. There are characters in that, like main characters, who are in every. Like all three, like all I'm in the fourth volume, and he and this there's a character in all four of these volumes. They're not in this trailer at all, but like they're a main character in a lot of panels. So, what are they doing? Are they remixing this? Is it are they just doing inspired by and doing their own adaptation a la Witcher, a la whatever other series out there that's like loosely based on something? And we're just gonna have fun with it, or are they trying to do it kind of chronolo or you know, shot for shot? I mean, all I can say is this trailer really hooked me. I mean, yeah. this looks like a really fun show, like uh, like and really personifying fun, like fun mystery. There's like a child involved, but it doesn't seem like too dark, but it also doesn't seem like too kitty. Like, I think it's a stretch to maybe say family friendly just based off the tone, but maybe like family friendly, like make sure your kids are maybe a little bit older when they watch it. It's, um, it's, I don't know. Did, did the graphic novels have any like gore oh, yeah. in them at it's, all? It's, oh, okay. The, the graphic novels are kind of dark. Like, Oh, maybe, like, maybe they'll go, maybe they'll go more uh, stranger things direction. Yeah. It's, it's the, very it, dark and, and kind of gruesome in some points to be completely uh, honest. But I mean, it just looked like a blast. I mean, it kind of reminded me of running around in the castle in Mario 64 and like jumping in the different paintings. Like yeah. there's different keys that do different things. And it doesn't seem like you know more about the story than I do. But I thought like, oh, one key opens a door. But it seems like keys don't necessarily just open doors. Maybe they affect the house in different ways. Right. And like moving through it. Like I'm very down for this mystery. So, it looks very fun. Th- it's not like a Narnia thing where you open a door and you go through and you're in a different place. Uh, mm-hmm. A door or an area will open up, like a, a cupboard. Well, there's in, in the comic, there's one that lets you change gender. In the com- it's a cupboard. You open up, you walk through it, you come out in the other room, you're a different gender. Uh, back and forth. There's one uh, we see in the trailer called the dead key, the dead door, where if you unlock the door, normally it's a regular door. If you open it with the key, you walk through, your body dies, and you're you're able to float around as a spirit and then come back into your, into your body. Or um, I think someone else came back in somebody else's body at one point. So um, there's that. There's a, a in the, a just you know there's t- hundreds of keys. But what I remember about there's a gigantification key. So you open it. It's a big key. You open it. You walk through. You're a giant now, kind of thing. Uh, and then there's one where you open up your head. You can put information in or take things out of it as well, which is a big part of the comic books. So you're gonna see some keys, man. And they're gonna do all <laughs> sorts of crazy stuff in here. I was promised keys. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the title, but uh, th- this house um, is, is called a. Uh, well, it's funny because it's in um, oh, what's that? Uh, Lo- the the town's called Lovecraft, and I'm like, well, that's kind of on the nose, isn't it? <laughs> I'm like, that's really, really on the nose. But yeah, I'm I'm still kind of going through it. And the, there's a, I think in the trailer, do you see the shadows chasing the kids? Like they're like yeah, shadow there, creatures and shadows. There was them. like a, there was a moment where like a door opens and you see some sort of lanky black creature on the other side yeah. of it. Some shadows chasing around. I, I'm excited to see kind of what's going on here. So uh, I'd recommend the books. I, they're not they're not my favorite. There's a lot of dialogue in some of them. And I'm like I don't want to read all this. I'd rather just you show me. So it's almost it's almost like a novel writer's son wrote it. <laughs> yeah, it's some of it's very dialogue heavy and some of it just jumps around. Like the volume four, they just start introducing keys like this because you already get the concept down so mm-hmm. um yeah i'm gonna be i'm gonna be playing with it. The, the the book has wrapped up so you don't have to go figure out anything else but 
February 7th, Friday on Netflix, next month. On that same day, though, you're just going to be competing with the Birds of Prey and the Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, or whatever it's called. Uh, and we got our second trailer. I can't believe it's only the second trailer for the show, or for this movie mm-hmm. this week as well. Uh, really kind of setting home that horror rating in this trailer. I believe they're shooting bags of cocaine, and Harley <laughs> Quinn takes a huge hit, uh, huff of it, and then goes to town beating people up. Yeah, uh, uh, this trailer seems to cement the style of the film a little bit more. It seems like it's going to be very dynamic, lots of really loud colors. Uh, we're not going to sub- be subdued, really, in any sort of like dark alley yeah. uh, for very long. Uh, kind of similar to the New Mutants trailer, uh, I f- we're just I feel like we're just getting more of the same. So I'm still interested in this film. I'm still going to see it. It piques my curiosity. But the I w- I didn't like I didn't uh, complete the trailer and just go like whoa I gotta go buy my tickets to Birds of Prey now because they're not on uh, sale. I looked. <laughs> well, if they were, so you know I'm, I'm curious. Well, we'll, we'll see. Margo, we'll see how it. See Margot how it goes. Robbie is selling this movie for me, right? She's really into the character here. I think a little more. And not the weird Suicide Squad version of her. Um, like you kind of see some of the Harleen Quinzel, where she's talking about how revenge doesn't you know doesn't give you the catharsis that you think it's going to give. I'm like, oh, I see her. And then she goes back to crazy. Uh, and then um, the Mary Beth Winstead as the Huntress is really selling it as well. I think her anger issues are really funny. Uh, and lastly, we get to see Black Mask as he's wearing the mask. Ewan McGregor wearing a black mask, like his name is. Uh, in this movie, which I think he's going to be fun. I, I want to see him play a villain role. I don't think we've seen him be evil yet, have we? In anything? Yeah, we, I mean, we we love you and McGregor on this podcast, yeah. so that's that's a plus. Yeah, but it also does that thing in the trailer where it syncs the violence with the music, where she's like <laughs> smashing people in the car and just like to the rhythm of the music. And I'm like, I hate this. I hate this. The ending. rhythm. The r- the rhythm is going to get you, Chris. Don't you know? Yeah, the rhythm of the night. Uh, <laughs> but no, we we always talk in our group chat. You know, our, our uh, friend of the show, Quentin. He's like when they do the the gun shooting and the cocking to the music and I'm like they did the same thing here and I'm like ah poor editing choices but that's fine <laughs> the batman filming right now mike we've got some set photos uh I showed you this earlier where it looks like uh, uh robert pattinson on a motorbike outside what probably is wayne manor if i was guessing man they even gave him a little box to stand on so he seems taller on the motorcycle in that first shot <laughs> uh but interesting enough the director has confirmed Colin Farrell will be playing the Penguin. Yeah, that's strange. I mean, I guess a lot of people are really tied to the idea of uh, the Penguin as a short and stout. Um, but, you know, I feel like we're kind of not really trying to reimagine Batman right now, but we've had so many incarnations of Batman over the years now. If they want to cast a, a short fat guy for the Riddler and like a handsome dude for the Penguin, or if they want Clayface to be a woman, or if they want to change um, uh, Killer Croc to like, I don't know, Nice Guy Croc who's a good guy all of a sudden, yeah. you know, go, go ahead and do it. Like, We've done Batman every different way now, so I just want a good story. So uh, Colin Farrell's a good actor. I think he can pull off the menace of the Penguin, and uh, I feel like I've already seen him dressed in similar materials. Like I think, uh, like when I when they said that he was going to be the Penguin, I was imagining him when he's like dressed in his like long coats in the first Fantastic Beast movie before he's revealed to be yeah. Johnny Depp. I was like, yeah, I can I can imagine him as a Penguin esque Victorian villain, you know? Yeah, you're really kind of leaning into the the umbrella, the the bow ties, and, you know, short coats kind of thing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not very far away. I mean, last time he played a superhero, I think, was, what, Bullseye in 2003's Daredevil? Oh, yeah. I actually liked Bullseye in that movie. The whole movie ended up not being not being a very good time, but him as Bullseye, he, he was digging it. He was eating up that script. Yeah, I, we had, like, an Irish accent, didn't he, or Scottish accent in that one, so... Yeah, he was... It was thick. That was that was for sure. Yeah, it was, it was fun. He was having a good time. Then also, apparently, on sets, there are reports that there are Gotham Action News 4 vans, and they're advertising HD live streams. So this puts the movies, like more in the modern times than previously thought. People thought it would take place like the 80s or something like that, like a prequel okay. kind of thing. So so, like, so it's it, – we're talking this decade. I mean, I guess you could date it as like the 2000s, but I don't know if this is just – me being an old man, but I don't ima- I don't envision the 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 two thousands, the aughts 
as a decade that's recognizable or nostalgic enough yet to like base a movie in that time. It just seems yeah. like if you're going to do the aughts, just either take it down a decade or bring it up the well, current time. The, so. the problem is, do you tie this into the current DCE universe and replace an older Bruce Wayne played by Robert or not Robert Ben Affleck, or do you just put it like you know, like said ten, fifteen years earlier, and be like, yeah, this is the same Batman, but you know, yeah, he was in the. 2000s. Well, if it has the word HD live stream, they're using the word stream. So this could be 2020, 2021, totally up to date. Well, and maybe their news department is now running around with like Facebook live they wouldn't, trying to get the story as it happens. They don't, know? they don't, the vans were, were disabled for news in like the early 2010s. Uh, they mostly just carry around like little, you know, like mobile hotspots now because I work with my boss. You work for TV, and my video guy worked for TV, so I, I know this stuff. So if they're using vans, it is it's the two thousands for sure. Mm. So that's why I'm I think this out. I think the I think the van is iconic enough that it's going to stick around for a while in cinema, even though it's a. Uh, not necessarily yeah. necessary, but yeah, when you when you want when you want like a stand-in for the public of Gotham to show up and witness something, bring in a news van instead of like a, a bunch of crowds yeah. of people on. So yeah, then either way, either way, we're saying it's not the eighties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is not like a weird old older version of Batman. So uh, mm-hmm. or younger version from a long time ago. That's fine. It's filming. But Warner Brothers making lots of questionable decisions. Uh, <laughs> and they will reportedly be using what's called Synolytic AI to greenlight films and testing it, which uses prediction software for profit and loss across all mediums, including streaming and cinema. And it's based on like star power, what territory it's in, keywords, all this other BS. <laughs> and I think this is like the stupidest thing ever. And I think it's going to backfire pretty quick. Well, I don't think it's going to really do anything, and I'm going to do my best not to gaslight any of uh, the audience of the podcast. Uh, I think I saw some very uh, level-headed minds out there on Twitter saying that, like, it doesn't matter what the AI software is. The producers are just going to find the information that they want out of it just to confirm their ideas, Uh, just like they were doing before when they were hiring probably, like, Nielsen for, like, focus groups and stuff like that. You know, if if somebody over there wants to make a specific Green Lantern movie, they're just going to... They're just going to use the software to either prove that they're going to make it or say, oh, I'm smarter than a computer. I've been around here longer. I'm, I'm, I'm just not worried about it. You know, mm-hmm. um, no one just I don't think anybody makes a decision just solely based on an AI, you know, so. But if they do start doing it, like I think, you know, they're going to use like three films and it's going to totally blow up. I think this is where John Carter of Mars and Tomorrowland got greenlit. Sound like they were from a computer. <laughs> they're great ideas. Cost a lot of money. Holy shit, we lost a lot of money. Well, We're not doing yeah, that again. Well, well also, the, my favorite thing about Hollywood, this is the thing I love the most about this industry, is you can never guess the next thing. Like, if you were using this software before uh, Deadpool and Kingsman came to the market, the software just would have told you to not make rated R movies. But then those movies come out, make rated R uh, high fashion again. So it's just like, you're, it's never, it's not going to be able to predict that because it's not well, out there. So it just, it sometimes it does just take the vision of a human to just like uh, step forward and just uh, make something with a little bit of a risk and you know computers won't do anything risky so if they did this in 2007 they would have never gotten Iron Man made Robert Downey Jr. (laughs) was in legal trouble was just got out of jail Iron Man was a C-list Marvel character and they it was never going to go anywhere and then look what happened so. Yeah. Now maybe this AI they'll use this like the only thing I know about sports is the movie Moneyball. So I can use this reference as a Moneyball situation of maybe the software wouldn't tell them to make Iron Man, but maybe the software would have been like, "Hey, we're making this Iron Man movie. Who should we cast?" And then maybe Robert Downey Jr. does pop up as a suggestion just because He's got the charisma, he's he's got the name recognition, but since he's had a little bit of a tattered past, we can get him maybe on the cheap. So maybe that's kind of maybe it'll this, help them other other avenues. This but. is <laughs> South Park's Awesomeo all over again, where it's just like Adam Sandler and X Y and Z because that's what made when Adam Sandler was coming out with all his movies. So I, I yeah, I just don't trust it. So but. well, and I, I'm just I'm not worried about it either way yeah. because I mean. 
it's is what is um is a different studio across town going to use the exact same software i mean they're not going to like that they're not going to want to make the same movie that warner brothers is making so it just well they're not it's people, not giving them ideas it's just green lighting if you put in the the put in the blanks like a mad lib it'll tell you yes make this movie or no here's it's red or green kind of thing like mm-hmm. oh this could be positive or negative <laughs> But I just think I think the company that owns it should just be proud of their hustle yeah. and the fact that they're able to swindle probably a lot of money out of these studios for something that you know they I, did, they didn't even need. As much as it hells we give Disney for owning everything, I think they won't use it. They're like, look, we we've, we've made a lot of risks, we've done a lot of good stuff, but people were behind that. I think they're gonna stick with that. So, or they'll just make their own in house one and just never tell anyone that they're using. They it. don't have to. They own all the big properties. Like, hey, you want Jar Jar Binks show? We got you a Jar Jar Binks show. <laughs> You don't care. Yeah, it's gonna, just, you're gonna watch it anyway. <laughs> yeah, Warner Brothers just fires up this AI and it just keeps telling them to make Disney movies. It's like we keep telling you, <laughs> computer, we can't make these movies. Like, well, that's what sells. So, yeah. like, oh, what a waste of money. So yeah, so yeah, we'll 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 see where this goes. We'll follow as as it comes out. But like Clockwork, the CW has probably did the same thing and they greenlit almost every show. For another season next year, Mike, including mm-hmm. The Flash, Supergirl, Batwoman, Black Lightning, and Legends of Tomorrow, which I'm surprised uh, Legends is still going. Yeah, I mean, uh, my uh, my wife used to be connected to uh, that studio for a little bit uh, a few years ago, and she was always telling me how uh, Black Lightning, well, not Black Lightning, I mean like Legends of the Tomorrow was, there was a lot of ebb and flow, and when a season went in, there would be a lot of people over there like kind of curious if they were getting another one, so good for Legends of the Tomorrow, that they're sticking around, making something unique, good for Black Lightning, I think this would be their third yeah. season, if I remember right, yep. so good for them. Uh, Second for you know, Batwoman. Who, who knows? Maybe some of these uh, survive the chopping block because Arrow was ending, so they're just like, hey, we got room. Split some budget up. They'll have to create a new one to make up for it, though. They make a new one every year. Every every mm-hmm. year's got a new season, so I wonder what the next one's going to be. Well, I mean, we got Stargirl coming out, so. Yeah, but that, is that legend? Is that you know considered war- CW or is that considered God. universe? You know, God, who knows? Who knows yeah. anymore? <laughs> Arrow was already ending, so that's why it didn't get renewed. They were like, we're done. So mm-hmm. that's it. Also, just for the SEO purposes, Mike, um, CW is also <laughs> going to redo Riverdale, All American Charmed Legacies, In the Dark, Roswell, New Mexico, Nancy Drew, and Dynasty. All right. I mean, uh, we're um, oddly fans of Riverdale in this household. Mm-hmm. We just kind of keep up with it to see what kind of crazy nonsense they're doing with those uh, kids. Uh, the show is approaching their high school graduations, though, so I'm curious. Uh, what they're going to do to keep the kids in this town or who knows, maybe all of a sudden there'll be a university in Riverdale that we weren't really familiar with and they'll just all go there. Who knows? Yep, exactly. I'm interested in, I'm surprised Nancy Drew is still going on, but I've heard good things from people who do watch Nancy Drew. So, oh, well, lastly, Avatar, not the last airbender, the show, the movie that now sits at number two at the worldwide box office, Mike, uh, James Cameron or the studio member who released some concept art from the upcoming sequels. And I thought I'd share this with you guys. Um, oh, you want a fun, uh, a fun little anecdote. This concept art was released at CES during this very weird uh, conference where they were actually announcing this electric car that teamed up with Avatar. Nice. So, so they were calling it the Avatar. I don't know if that's just what. God, I'm so glad I didn't hear this now. <laughs> I don't know if that. I don't know if that's just what the media is calling it. But it was just this weird kind of concept car that I like had scales on the rear end of it, and the scales would move to talk to other cars. And I don't. I don't know what car company teamed up with them, but I think basically they just wanted James Cameron on stage with them so they could just talk about Does this. Does the old car movie go that, underwater? <laughs> I don't. I don't think it does. Well, then, I don't, I don't know why wanna, he's up there. If it didn't go, I don't think. To, I don't think you want to put an electric car underwater. But but right he's now. he's all about the bottom of the ocean, Mike. So I don't. I don't know but, what he's doing down there. But either way, I think there is ocean in every single one of these pieces well, of concept art, actually. So th- um, that'll tell you where the second one's going then, underwater. Yeah, it's been a million years since I've seen the first Avatar movie, and we've promised our audience that we're going to rewatch it once the second one uh, gets a little closer to release. So I don't remember a giant planet looming in the background so i don't know if is that pandora 2 is that a second planet are we going to be planet well, hopping i will tell you if, after going to disney and doing all the avatar stuff there right um mm-hmm. all of this is very very familiar to the rides um mm-hmm. so the first one we got you know two navi which i assume are the two main characters overlooking like a like a shallow lagoon kind of thing 
That looks great. The second one is the nighttime. It looks like there's some like green algae in these like levels of water here. But yeah, you talk about the planets. I don't remember there being other planets either. Yeah, and it, it, it seems to be a focus in three out of the four of these. So yeah. maybe there's some uh, uh, rare, super rare unobtainium on this May- other planet. Maybe there's a, uh, a, a arriving faction of aliens on the other well, planet. It, did we not go to this side of the planet in the first movie? It's my guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, are we going to exp- – uh, I just don't know. It's been so long since yeah. I've seen the movie. I can't intelligibly talk well, about it. But I'm looking forward to rewatching it with you at some point. The though. third one is very much reminiscent of that ride, uh, the Flight of Passage ride. That's like they mm-hmm. strap you in and they fly you on one of these little flapping beasts, mm-hmm. which looks really cool. And the last one makes me look like, are these natural rock formations or is there something about this planet we're going to learn like that something was here beforehand and that makes everything float? Mm. Yeah, I mean, that was the iconic thing about the architecture, and I think they tried to recreate this down at Disney of those those floating rocks that I'm sure they used vines to make it look like they were floating, but the, the vines were actually holding them up from yeah. some of the photos that I've seen. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is just like the whole nature, spiritual aspect of the planet that just makes things float. Well, they probably don't ha- They probably don't have to get into it. But, yeah, the, the formations are really cool. Is, it looks like some sort of blast kind of came through there. Exactly. Is that other planet pulling gravity towards them, and that's why things are floating? I don't know. Mm, but the circular, the, this blasting, looks like it could line up with that planet is why I bring that up. Oh, maybe it's like a ritualistic place yeah, or something, something like that. something like that. I don't know. There, I've, I think we're going to learn something about this planet that you met, you know we've talked about a little bit. So uh, I think the art, concept art looks cool. It looks a little samey, but, you know, whatever. Avatar, at the, if anything, was pretty. At, at the end of the day, don't doubt James Cameron. I guess you could prob- probably doubt the movies he's executive produced, but every movie he's directed has been good. I, I don't think anybody can really... Uh, uh, I don't think Avatar's debate. good. I don't think anybody can debate his box office return. Well, or I guess successful is, I will, the, is the word I should say. I will tell you, I have been looking into this, and the there are no more, like the value and the, the showings of 3D showings have reduced tremendously since the first Avatar when 3D was on the rise, which made it have all the box office it did because um, the upcharge for 3D. So mm. I don't know if this will do as good, but... Hopefully they release them all very shortly back to back, so we can just get this done with. It's my hope. <laughs> so yeah, one a, one a year. Let's run through them. Yeah, so we'll we'll do that with with whatever kids are being nappy now. But Mike, that's our show. We're gonna end on this note of this beautiful concept art, and we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, if people want to know what you're doing, what's going on, where can they find you at this week? Oh, it's so easy to do. All you got to do is follow me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, see what you're doing, where can they find you? you can find me on Twitter, Valdan, V A L D A N, or Instagram, Valdan87. I've got a couple codes left, just a few. If you want to get one of those free movies I'm giving out, you send me a message, and I'll hook you up, uh, to say the least. Uh, people want to know. Um, What's going on? Next month is C2 e- or C2E2 for me, by the way, Mike. I want to remind that people have been reaching out and wanting to meet up with me there. I will be there. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. People know all of our other shows, and next month when we do the Harley Quinn Birds of Prey review, where can they find all that stuff at? Oh, all you got to do is visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues we host our show and to get our awesome show notes. So we got a lot of blue links in this document here. So you're going to want to check out those show notes so you can see everything that we talked about this week. And you can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love hearing from you, so please reach out and let us know how your 2020 is going. What are you looking forward to? What do you want to see us talk about that maybe is not on our radar? We love to we love to know what you guys are thinking of. And if you want to be a super fan of this show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we will be here every week, Chris. Especially next week with that Morbius trailer you're all so excited for. Mm-hmm. We'll see you then. All right, bye. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. Like, they're real cheap, so I might get a few, but... Hell yeah, might as well.